Hey guys, Tom Davidson, Lane and Hutchison back with another episode of Yard Work Season 2. Uh, we have Joe Laurier today with the Muck Dogs. This is our 2020 17U National Championship runner-up team. Uh, Joe, thanks for coming on with us. I actually looked back and we had some Muck Dogs in the 2018 and 2019 Nationals for the 15 and 16-year-olds too. Can you tell us a little bit about this team and how they got to the 2020 National Championship game? Yeah, it's... Um... We started, uh, we have an indoor batting cage facility and we've had a little bit of summer teams and now the travel ball has gotten bigger. So then we decided to be competitive that we were gonna up and add more teams. So back at 13, we uh, had, had like four teams that would be in the current 18 U age bracket. And then from there, we just kept filtering and, and taking that best team that we have. And it just kept getting better and it's, uh, it's a core group of kids, some that have been with us since 13, a lot that have been with us since 15 when we made the run and we lost in the semifinals. Um, and then the next year, we lost in the semifinals, uh, you know, in extra innings. And then this year, we came up a little short, but we got to the finals. So, But the, the group of kids, uh, probably 75, 80% of the team has been with us since 15. So it's just something that we built. Um, they're all going to be playing at the college level. Some are playing currently at the college level. And it's honestly, it's a team that competes on the national level. And it's really uh, Southeast Michigan kids. So we, we don't uh, go and steal kids from other teams. It's, it's our kids. They're a great group of kids that work hard. They're good ball players. They don't back down from anybody. And it's been a process of their hard work, the hard work we put in as coaches. And it's, it's gelled. Yeah, so the 2020-17 teams, I know we saw you guys three or four times, and you did well pretty much across the board. But for that 17U national, I think you guys were 4-0 in pool play. And then, I mean, you ran through a couple of pretty good teams, even with Midland uh, during bracket play. Can you tell us kind of how that, that full event came together? Because I know the last two weekends when you were at nationals and then University of Michigan July 30, um, I don't know that you guys – you guys lost the, the championship game in 17 U Nationals, but you didn't really – that was the only game you lost in a couple of weeks there. Right, yeah. I mean, we turned around the next week and uh, went in your pastime with Michigan Woodback Classic, and uh, we actually had three or four of our starters who decided they had enough baseball, so we were scrambling to try to get enough kids for that tournament. But our program is pretty deep, and we moved some kids to different spots that were pitchers only, and – we ended up uh, beating the Chai Town Cream and won that tournament. So yeah, we lost one game in the last two weeks, yeah. and, you know, and uh, at the national level. So <clears throat> it's a testament to the kids. We've had a lot of them that you know they came through. They 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 don't back down from anybody. The Midland Braves bringing them up. Um, been doing this a long time. That team was there to win the national championship. They were loaded. Their pitchers going to Kentucky. Their first baseman's going to Tennessee. We got kids going to some junior colleges some NAIA schools, you know, we're small college kids, but we're, you know, it's baseball. Baseball is different than football. And uh, they came out with the kid going to Kentucky and the other kid that's going to Tennessee and somehow in extra innings, we beat them. You know, it's, we pulled it out, we got down. And then uh, uh, Justin Kozlowski has been with us since 15, came up with a big uh, double in the gap and scored two runs. And the kid that was at first, that was courtesy running is one of our is our starting third baseman, but he jammed his thumb playing playing for somebody else a couple of weeks earlier when we were off. So I couldn't use him, but he's pretty fast. We put him in the run and he scored from first and we took the lead. They tied it. They went ahead next innings. We scored two in the bottom. Zach Meyer came up with a big sack fly. Scored Zach Levans, who's been with us since 15, has been a great player. And he scores the winning run. And you know, that team had division one players all over the place. So that was it was a nice run. That game right there was a staple, I would say. <clears throat> you know, the year before we beat the Triple Crown Royals, who unfortunately we lost to in the finals. But the year before, they were supposed to kick our butt, and we beat them in the I think it was the quarterfinals, yeah. five to four in a great game. So we've, uh, you know, we've had some uh, good things happen. You know, these, these, like I said, these kids have pretty much been together. So. Tell us a little bit about your program and the history of it a little bit, where you're located, the kids you have, and you've said that you've had basically the same team uh, for three years going. Uh, so just yeah. tell us a little bit about them. Well, what it is is um, we are we are in Macomb County in Michigan, which is uh, you know south, southeast, you know, little um, 
east of uh, Detroit. So we're in the suburbs. Um, we started batting cages 22 years ago. My business partner, Ken Kozlowski and I, and we are the longest standing indoor batting cage in Macomb. We've been you know, in business 22 years. We've been Macomb batting cages from day one. We own a landscaping company. I see the yard work, I see the rake, so it's appropriate. So we have a landscaping company and about 10 years into it, you know, I coach high school baseball. I played in college. I was like, Hey, during the winter, we can find a building. We do snow removal, but it doesn't snow all the time. Let's, uh, you know, do a little extra. Let's have a side business with the batting cages. Cause there was a place that was doing pretty well with it. It was packed all the time in the winter. So that, and I coached in high school at a top high school down the road and um, it worked and we were just doing a little side thing. And then uh, it, a couple years into it, the, the guy that was doing it got out of it. So for a couple of years, we were like the only batting cage in a 30 mile radius. And then everyone decided anybody's got a warehouse now has an indoor batting cage. So that's how Macomb batting cages started. And, you know, then we got into the lessons and teams coming in. We had a little bit of fed ball. Our first fed team when my son was, uh, 11 years old, I started a Fed team after the Little League at 9 and 10 Little League stuff. Then we went to a Fed team, but we never promoted it. We just had a team or two, not too many. And then uh, the business changed. And then everybody who, even if they have never played before, decided to get a building and get a logo and team name and have 20 teams. And, you know, we're like, wait a second. We've been doing this longer than anybody. So we're going to have to jump into, you know, the summer baseball market and get our own teams and get more of them. And that's what we did. And that's how it's evolved to, you know, where we've gotten with the program. Yeah. That's that kind of expansion of youth sports and baseball that we've seen where <clears throat> some people think it's just, it's now watered down, but I, I, just, I truly think it's just providing more opportunities for these guys to play, whether it's in a, in a league format or in the tournaments and things like that. I think it's great. Yeah. I mean, I, I think what's, I think what's happened in Michigan you know, when I was growing up, it was Little League, Little League, Little League. There was no, I mean, I didn't, you know, Fed Ball, there was like four, four teams, but Fed Ball was only for like 15 through 18 years old at most. I mean, I played in a league called the Adre League when I was in college, which was a top-notch league up here in Michigan. And uh, over time, it evolved where Fed Ball then started getting really popular with 15 through 18. Then it started moved down to the 13, 14, and now it's down to like seven years old, eight years old. It's crazy. So, I, and you know, and you, and the kids that are serious about baseball, the, like the pastime tournaments and some of the other organizations, you know, that are out there to have tournaments, you need to, you need to go to like your, you know, pastime tournaments are very competitive, very well run. You need to go to those tournaments. If you want to test your kids and, and play against the best of the best, that's what you do. Yeah, what would you say your coaching philosophy is, Coach? I mean, again, you've had these kids for a long time. What uh, separates you from the the Midlands and whatnot? You're not recruiting those kids. You're getting those local kids. So when it comes down to it, what's your uh, what's your bones? Um, I I mean, I you know myself personally, I I was lucky to uh, be on a state championship team in high school. Played for a legendary coach in Michigan. Played in college and it, and it went well. Um, and, um, you know, even though I might have been lazy in practice at times, I was always cerebral behind the scenes, seeing things that went on and went into coaching. And I'm, you know, I'm going to tell you how it is. So my players respond. I can be intense. I can uh, get on them, but they know I, you know, I love them. And so it's how I am. I don't care who you are. I'll move you from first in the order to 10th. I mean, an example, our team last year, uh, in the World Series, the kid that was hitting first is at Davenport College, Michael Cowdery. Kid is batting second, Zach Levans, who's uh, at Kellogg Community College right now. Both of them started struggling being the year without a high school season because of COVID, right? And they were struggling. I got these kids who are college players. They're top players at their high schools. So there's no high school season. Well, uh, I, I had moved them down to like eight, nine, and even 10 in the order with the extra hitter. And I was moving the lineup around. So my philosophy is, you know, it you got to keep, you got to continue to prove yourself and continue to do it. And the kids respond to that. Uh, I mean, they know that I'm going to get on them, but they know that nobody's going to outwork us. I, my staff, you know, uh, uh, my business partner works his butt off. He, you know, uh, 
Ken has always got things organized for us and stuff, and he's there with a helping hand. And then a couple of young coaches that I have in the organization helped out, Pat Galapa and Chris Whitney. They were great um, to calm me down when I got a little crazy and stuff. But uh, that's pretty much it. We work really hard. We don't back down from it. That, that, that's our motto. We don't care. We love – you know, Midland Braves, kids going to Kentucky. The first baseman's going to Tennessee. It's like, bring it on. They throw 92, 93, and we beat them. Because I don't – I think people come in, and now they're starting to realize who we are. But then again, we don't have – you know, we don't have the SEC players. we got good kids that are going to play college, and our kids are not going to back down. And that's my mentality. That's our business mentality. It's my business partner's mentality. And that's how we are. And, and nobody's going to outwork us. What we always say is we may not be the best, but – what you can control is effort and enthusiasm. And we always tell them, you, you may not be the best, but you control how hard you work. And our kids work pretty hard at it. And when it comes to game time, they're focused. They haven't lost too many games over the last three years. Yeah, we we continue to talk about how well those JUCO guys compete against even the Division One guys. If you're playing college baseball somewhere, I mean, you're good. They're yeah, good. like an example of – you know, Landon saw one of our pitchers, and we didn't even have him in the World Series last year because he, Ashton Potts, great kid, been with us since 15. He broke his collarbone on his 18th birthday because he found a bike in the trash, and his parents got him the big wheels, and he was doing wheelies with it, and he broke his collarbone. So we had him for the first two tournaments, and he had like a point-something ERA. He throws like upper 80s. So he's done for the year. Um Landon saw him throw. So that's an example. Ashton Potts, who's at Kellogg right now, topping out at 91. He's their hardest thrower coming out of the fall. He's going to be a weekend starter. He's not going to back down from anybody. we got a lefty, Luke Murkoff, who's committed to Jackson Community College, and a righty, Maceo Miller, who's committed to Jackson. Both those guys, you know, Luke I've had for three years. Luke's drawn every tough opponent. He's the guy that beat Triple Crown Royals at 16U. They, they don't they, – they just don't back down and they, they have good stuff. And right now it's tough, as you guys know, and Landon knows the rosters are loaded because of the COVID. So a lot of these kids, like I think Luke Murkaw and I think Ashton Potts and Maceo Miller, who are three great pitchers, I think all of them would have been high division two, if not low level D one potentially, but with COVID and everything, coaches get these players back. So you got to look at smaller schools or you got to look at the junior college route. But our kids know they're good players and they're not going to back down from anybody. And, you know, 90s, 90, 88s, 88, whether you're going to Kellogg or whether you're going to uh, MSU. Yep. Totally agree. Yeah, the only other thing I would say is just take us through, you talked about some, some arms, but who are some of those uh, uncommitted position players that are still out there? Use this platform real quick to shine some light on those <clears throat> Well, what we have, um, I'll go through it quickly. Um, the kids the kids from last year's team that are playing in college was Dominic Cadre, our center fielder at Davenport. Zach Levans is an uh, outfielder. He's our right fielder. He's at Kellogg. Gabe Kirk bats third. He was our first baseman, DH. He's at Olivet College. Ryan Brown, who uh, we picked up from the Chi-Town Cream, uh, was DH and pitching a little bit for us. He's at Ball State. Uh, we have... Um, Mark Binkowski was our shortstop pitcher. He's at uh, Aquinas College. And um, those are the, uh, I think that's, that's, those are the guys that are in college currently. And then we got a bunch of other guys now that are heading down the, you know, oh, and Ashton Potts is at Kellogg. So those guys are all in college right now. I think three or four are coming back, some, you know, depending on their college coach situation. Um, and then we've got, you know, position players. Um, our catcher, Zach Meyer, our starting catcher, uh, he committed to Jackson. He had Division II interest. Uh, NAI Madonna, he's a great catcher. He's a genius back there, 4.3 student quarterback in football. Um, he's committed. But then we've got, you know, we've got some other players right now that have a lot of interest. They just haven't committed yet. We've got, um, you know, we talked about Maceo Miller. He's got a great arm. He's already committed. But we got a kid, Harry Crane, who's like a 4.1 student at University of Detroit Jesuit. He's got a lot of D3 interest, a uh, real 6'4 lanky kid. We got a catcher third baseman, Dylan Pawinski, who usually starts at third base for us. He's getting a lot of interest from JUCO, uh, NAIA schools. And um, then we got a kid, Jason Higgins, who's been with us for three years, real good arm. 
Uh, we just got to get him more off, off the mound. But he comes through in any situation for us. Um, and it doesn't matter. We start him. We relieve him. He's always been there for us. We put him in the outfield. He's just one of those kids that accepts his role, and hopefully we can uh, get him uh, going as a pitcher in college. Then uh, Justin Kozlowski has been with us since 15, my business partner's son. He uh, played second base for us, a little bit of third, a little bit of first, pitches at times. He's uh, getting NAI interest, um, hits the ball really hard, got some pop, uh, just hard-nosed, you know, Got a bunch of kids that uh, don't back down. Luke Murkaw, I mentioned him, the left-handed pitcher. We had a kid, Andrew Janikowski, who filled a great role. He's not with us anymore this year. He went to someone else. He's from the other side of town. Did a great job for us. Played first. Uh, DH pitch. Did whatever. You know, accepted his role because he didn't play as much as some of the other guys. So, um, that's, you know, I don't, um, we had Larry Smayfield, who I don't know if he's playing with us this year. He was with us for three years. He's been one of our best players. I don't know if he's going to, I don't know, you know, he's got interest in football too. So I don't know if he's going to play summer baseball again, but you know, Lawrence did a great job for us for three years, played short outfield pitch, whatever we needed him to do. Great athlete, never been thrown out in three years, stealing bases for us. And uh, hopefully maybe he'll come play with us a little bit this year, but he was a big part of our success when he came over at 15, he helped us turn the corner and he's getting interest from like uh, I know Jackson community college, some other community, Kellogg and some other ones have interest in Lawrence, but I don't know what he's going to do, you know, because I don't even know if he's playing baseball in the summer, but he's definitely a kid that if he wants to pursue it, will definitely play at the next level, you know, play somewhere in college. Well, coach, appreciate you coming on with us. I know uh, as you continue to get to those semifinals and finals for our national championships every year, when we go back and set the schedule for the next year, we have to try to make it a little more difficult. Uh, I know when we see some of those big names out there, whether it's the Midlands or Razorbacks, those kind of guys, we try to make sure they've got one or two games in pool play that just make them think a little bit. So we'll probably have to throw throw another couple guys in there at you to see how we can we can help improve the competition level during that pool play side. But look forward to seeing you guys this coming year. And again, 2020, 17 national championship runner ups. Um, you know, I really appreciate you coming on with us. Yeah, and I appreciate I appreciate. It. Hopefully this year we can uh, we can win it, and we'll take the Razorbacks or the Midland Braves. We'll we'll take it. I mean, we may not win, but they're gonna they're gonna know they're in for a game if they're playing us. And I think that uh, you guys know who we are, and I'm sure the teams out there know who we are. So hopefully, uh, you know, we'll we'll get there this year. And hopefully we'll win it all, and then we can talk next year about how we went semifinal, semifinal, final, and then won it all. <laughs> there you go. I appreciate you, coach. All right, thank you. Thanks, coach.